Welcome back to another episode of Woody Banter. You're, we got a full set of hosts here, Nabil, Daniel, Anika, and Monim. Unfortunately, our last episode uh, was a technical difficulty that prevented us from getting any of the audio of our conversation. But it was a lively one. It was an interesting conversation. We talked about, uh, well, one idea that stuck with me was the idea of prototyping. Um, when you have an idea of something, and it can be in any field, software engineering, uh, in your business, in your writing, and then just um, whether or not you like the that part of um, creating something. And then we also talked about, you know, a lot of the software companies, they start off as these experimental things, and then when they get picked up, it comes a regular business, and whether or not we liked which part did we like the per, the early stage of creating something where it's more experimental or the running of a established business so we had our opinions on that uh, but but and we'll maybe pick up on that stuff in a bit um since it wasn't recorded I mean. yeah but um so anika uh, you said you something a famous writer wrote a review about you what is this writer why is she so <laughs> <laughs> why is she She's so important what's the deal with this writer what has she yes, done yes babsi sidva is a very famous pakistani writer who has written quite a few novels um and I think she's one of the uh, foremost writers in English. She started writing, I imagine, I think in the 60s. Um, there were only a few novels written by Pakistani writers in English at that time. Um, I, I, if anything, the, the novelists, you know, the one or two that were existed, wrote one or two novels. And, and she was one of those persistents and quite um, prolific author who's written quite a few novels and some of her novels became very famous movies as well um directed by famous um what i have known of do, do i know the movie if you said the name of the movie um yeah i i, I would imagine um what we is have the name seen of the them movie? at home with denzel washington uh, oh no that was the producer of the movie that wasn't the, oh, we're not okay. talking about babsi sidva the person who uh, produced Mississippi Masala also produced uh, and that was a oh. famous that was Denzel Washington's first movie she was an Indian director and I will just google her name but um, she also directed um, Neira. Babsi's Neira um, ne Neira no um, what's her name um, I was going to google it while I'm talking but um, the Babsi Sidva, um, the reason I'm so pleased with her response um, is that she is, um, is Mira Nayar is the, the movie director who um, directed movies by, um, also directed movies uh, of um, Babsi Sidva. Um, so she's, um, Babsi is known for her novels, primarily the first one, or the first one that I remember is uh, Crow Eaters, but it's also known by another name. Um, uh, it, the movie that was made was Earth. It was about partition. So it was something, a movie that resonated with a very large audience, both India and Pakistan. And in fact, Amir Khan, you know Amir Khan, the famous uh, actor, maybe yeah, you've actor. seen moves. Is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, the guy with the three idiots, two yes. thumbs. No, no, that's three dumb dumbs. No, that's different. Three dumb dumbs. Three, <laughs> dumb <laughs> <laughs> three idiots. Is, idiots. Is idiots. This <laughs> famous movie, but um, no, it's not the, the, that oh, one. Okay, okay. It's another one. Oh, yeah, anyway, uh, so he was in the movie uh, Earth or Crow Eaters, that was the name of the movie. Um, she'd also written the, the more recently, she's written about. Um, um, an immigrant in the U.S. and her life story. So how did she hear about your novel? I actually approached her, and that that's something mm. I've realized that... Um, one thing I've realized, if, if someone doesn't believe in their own story, then nobody else will believe in it either. Yeah, that's true. And so that is why I do believe that this is my the story I've written is a unique story. Um, Sorry, the and, like. and not many have been written from the perspective that I have written it. Uh, particularly with strong female characters by women of rural Pakistan 
or potentially any South Asian village. And so I am reaching out to as many people as I can to share the story I've written and um, hopefully, um, and I keep reaching out to people. And of course, Babsi, I, I've so idolized her all my life. I remember as a teenager, um, Re there, there weren't that many libraries where we were living and so usually if you wanted to read a book you would have to purchase your own copy or create your own library and and whenever I b this was pre-internet and you you know I'd be I'd go to the bookstore and ask them to make sure they had copies of her book available so that I could buy the most recent one so is that you know how where if you can equate to a time in your teenage years early late teenage years where there was something that you were really obsessed about mm -hmm. um, and that comes around somewhat full circle to your life comes back again um, and sometimes when you see something when you're really young um, you look at it from you know you from a distance and you think oh I was that was funny I was impressed by this but it isn't really what I thought it was now that I look at it with adult eyes and Babsi Sidva is not one of those uh, writers I mean she definitely even whether it was back then when I read her books that I, I thought that she's a great writer she was a great storyteller I didn't know the the beauty of her writing at the time I was more focused on the stories she was telling and they were all very familiar to me and that's why I appreciated them but now as a writer I think she's you know when I look at her now from a literary perspective she also plays a major role in um, English literature from South Asia so that is why I am extremely excited and do these kind of things do you think they're effective in marketing your book I feel it gives credibility to your work. When people in your field look at your work and say, yes, this is worthy of attention, um, particularly in the creative world where a lot of information is very subjective. So whether it's the storyline, the plot line, yes, there's the craft of writing which is can be refined and can be unique. Um, <coughs> But when it comes to the content, there's so many writers out there who are writing so many stories and not to say that any one is better than, you know, that, that much better than the other. But there's some stories which you think um, people, if they're not familiar with those stories, they tend not to pick them up. So if somebody with credibility points it out and highlights it, you know, it's like the Oprah book club. You know, once, once somebody gets named by Oprah, it's kind of you, your book. So potentially an opportunity could arise in the future where larger media outlets are looking at interviews and then they could see your accolades and then say, okay, we'd like to interview this person. And potentially so then that could be this kind of remark from a credible writer could be like, oh, okay, well, this person has uh, had other established mm. people say well things about them. Or yeah. it could be from like a someone who's looking to purchase the book if they look at it and they're like oh who's this Anika Rana lady and then she published somewhere on mm. her thing that oh this person said this mm -hmm. about, oh I know that writer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that kind of thing and of course I mean <coughs> everyone in South Asia who reads knows of who reads English novels Babsi Sidva's name comes to the top mm -hmm. Whether, whether it's male or female, but the fact that she's a female makes it even more um, impressive for me. I met with Ajit a few days ago. Or, I mean, yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> well, no, the day before oh. yesterday. Yeah, it was yeah. Friday. It was Friday. And then we made a interesting observation that a lot of people in engineering and software engineering are like Indian or Russian. Is that a stereotype? And you know, what Eastern European. This is so interesting because I do have, you know, granted I only have two students. Uh, I have three students who are Eastern European, and out of those two are computer, computer. Pro, one is a programmer, and another is um, also working in the high tech industry. Mm -hmm. So what is that? Yes. Is it a family value thing? I was willing to take a guess in that. Actually, yeah, I don't know. What was your sense. What was his perception? No, we didn't say anything after that. We just not acknowledge that. Yeah, I don't know why that mo a lot of these guys are so Eastern European, Indian or Eastern European. 
Well, software is definitely a very heavily Indian, uh, you know, uh, population. So there's, a, there's an expectation you'll see someone from South Asia. What about Eastern Europe? Do you expect you will see people Not from... Not as much. Uh, is there... Do you think in the grade schools in, like, India or South Asia... Um, do you think they have a lot of computer classes in elementary school? No. So what uh, India has done is they have these, um, you've heard of them, ITTs, I think. These technical institutes. Technical institutes. Mm. So there they are, because they know the demand for software engineering is there. Mm -hmm. So they are training them for that purpose so that they can get jobs. In yeah, but what makes... What about China? It, it, is I'm there sure they have a big one too, but so although I, I haven't noticed it. China is not as well known mm. uh, f in software. Mm -hmm. where, where in, uh, if you look at both the countries, uh, China has more manufacturing. Mm. India has more software engineering. Because of the lack of capacity to manufacture. Well, the lack of in China ended up, I mean, they were in the same boat as uh, India, but mm. they ended up, I, I think either it's their national psyche or way of doing things that they were able to have that discipline infrastructure to uh, manufacture and produce for the world whereas India went the other way and mainly towards software engineering producing well, in a way it's good that you identify what part of the world you know when, when you're looking at competitors rather than jumping into everything focusing on an area that you think you can that is more manageable. I would imagine the knowledge base industry is helps. I, I think if you look at, I know um, if, even though I haven't been to India or China, but if you look at China has the infrastructure they have built mm -hmm. um, is, you know, vastly different than 20 years ago. Whereas Indian, I think looking at Pakistan and India in a similar light, uh, their infrastructure is quite not as advanced as uh, China. So I, I think that may have something to do with the manufacturing aspect of it because to get a product out as quickly as possible and in the cheapest way, you need to have that uh, infrastructure. So now why because don't I get the sense that how come the United States doesn't have a huge thing of computer or software engineers or just engineers in general? Good because they, as big as I, I feel that in the US in general, there is a vast number of areas where you can become experts mm -hmm. and be successful. There's a lot more choices. Right. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's not as focused. If I oh, yeah, think of true. when we grew up in Pakistan and at the time, anyone who was getting an education, it was highly commendable to get the hard sciences, whether you're male or female. Get, get into the hard sciences wherever possible because going into the creative part of or social sciences was not going to get you the money, money uh, that you would need. Uh, I think that um, trend has continued the next in these last 40 years. Whereas in America, there tends to be uh, a much more, there, there are many more options. You can like be a graphic design or something. Well, uh, I mean, anything, right? A lot yeah. more. I, I think also the, you know, other than engineering. Could be an, you a could local be, independent coffee barista. Right, exactly. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And you can make a living. Whereas uh, Indian side of things, I think they feel if they are not, um, <coughs> they don't have a software engineering uh, degree, they, it's not as easy it's kind to of come the, out of the poverty. Yeah. The stereotype of you have to be a doctor or engineer it's because the other options are like or you could just be really poor right. i mean if you yeah. look at for example in places in western europe you look at um whether it's italy and you look at the whole art and design world they have a market to sell their artistic endeavors whether it's in clothing or whether it's in um, you know, the kind of cars that they produce. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at India or Pakistan or that part of the world, there's not enough clientele to be able to buy the clothing that would be that expensive or that exorbitant. So, I mean, that's just kind of one little <coughs> example of a field that 
yes, people spend a lot of money on clothes in Pakistan, but they will not spend the same amount that you might have from a French or Italian house of um, design, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think globalization will um, blend the, or make these markets non-local? Yes. So like, whereas traditionally there may not be this clientele in India, but mm -hmm. now with the younger generation of Indians, uh, they will uh, generate a, um, a, t a taste or appreciation for these kind of products? Well, yeah, I, it's funny. I was just looking at um, Instagram and, you know, now that I'm trying to promote the book through Instagram and I, I look at, you know, what other people are doing and how they're doing, you know, pr pr presenting work. And there's this video channel. I don't know what it's called, you know, when it's in Instagram. You can see a video. video. It's just a video. TV. Okay. Or yes, it's called. I mean, it's something like IGTV. Instagram. Yeah. Oh, Instagram, Instagram TV. TV. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, is this separate from? This is different from like just the stories. Oh, the yeah. stories. It's different than that. It's like um, they basically have a video section where you can just mm, browse okay. videos. Okay. And so as I was watching that, you know, I was looking at it. I'd posted my little thing, you know, to highlight my quote, and I was looking at some of the videos. One of the videos was of a Pakistani, very famous Pakistani actress. Um, who a TV actress and she's come in movies as well. She was representing L'Oreal Pakistan and going to Paris. And, you know, and of course I was, I, I thought well, that this is strange. Why would, you know, what's the, what's the connection? But it is that globalization of, here yeah, she's in, in Paris. It's um, a very, um, uh, well, L'Oreal does do a lot. I remember oh, they yeah. would make ads a lot in Pakistan. Yes. They, I mean, India is... Uh, India as well. Yeah. The, the beauty huge industry. Market. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. There is a huge market. But yeah, there's there's a new, relatively new um, phase of like, uh, like actors creating these little snippets. Mm -hmm. It's like a promotional piece, but it's also like, a, it's like, hey, look guys, I'm, uh, I'm doing yes. this thing. Yes. And then that's like a... Like that's a thing that actors weren't doing like yes. a couple yeah. of years it's ago. Not, it's not a traditional ad. It's yeah, not a yeah. commercial. It's just... A and ads are changing in that way. Yes. Yeah. For yes. the better, I think. Yes. Because yes. I'm... The jingles are kind uh, of... We're done with these boring TV yes. ads. Like, yeah. Show us a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And great. I think people who are fans of... It's more powerful because then people who are fans of these actors like these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's more organic. Yeah, now, where, organic, was, I, yeah, where yeah. was I last Sunday that I missed that conversation? And why do we, can we revisit that conversation? Uh, oh, there's a few I was in I was in Berkeley watching yeah. a play. Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, and what was this play called? The play was called The Great Wave. And it was about the um, Korean, um, South Koreans who had been kidnapped by, no, sorry, reverse it it was japanese who had been kidnapped by north koreans in the 70s and 80s and um for a long while people weren't sure what was happening to these people and the, this story in particular which was an amalgamation of all the stories was about this young woman who is kidnapped and the family doesn't know what has happened to her and she she's taken to japan and uh, sorry taken to north korea and um she's supposed to train the um, North Korean spies to be able to work in Japan and it's just the more of the human story of the hum human impact of this um, and the great wave is this very famous Japanese painting you've probably seen oh, it. Oh I know it's because I know it because it's a, a, a print. <laughs> uh, yes yes because I so that was from the ASMR videos that I watched <laughs> <laughs> of the print makers um, mm. Tell, tell us more about those printmakers. Well, so it's just a style of making uh, art art, mm -hmm. uh, where you get a wooden block and you carve out the thing on the wooden block and then you apply different sort of paints and liquids mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you just press the mm -hmm. uh, painting on it. And one of the great ones is the, the one Great you, Wave. The Great Wave. Yes, um, by, by a famous Japanese. So somehow um, I know about that. <laughs> and so the whole, uh, the way they'd set up the theater was is, is a, a major um, uh, storm. Uh, and they, their house, or the, the people that are living near the ocean, and that's where people come in and they um, kidnap her and she's taken and, and hence the Great Wave. It's also kind of the immigrant experience. Now here's what's interesting. 
The author who wrote the play is a Japanese sheep farmer in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is that not interesting that, you know, he would talk yeah. about it? But what was really nice about this play was at the end, and this is the, the Berkeley um, rep is the, the place. It's where we saw that Pakistani play as well, remember? Mm -hmm. Um they they do these very um unique they present these very unique plays not the you know run of the mill kind of plays and then they have uh time for discussion afterwards so as you're leaving the pl the theater there's someone sitting there with a um, microphone and they have chairs around there and say do you want to kind of debrief and i think that's really n a nice way to connect with the theater and the art that you're watching because you um you get to talk to others about what you have just experienced rather than just getting in your car and going home. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a nice, complete experience. But the reason I brought it up was not so much I wanted to share what I had seen. Yeah, I know. I was what more we were of talking what you about. were talking yeah, about. Yeah, so what did we talk about last yes. time? One was There's sports. A, a right? few things. Yeah, yeah, initially we talked about sports and uh, we were talking about football and what gets us engaged into sports. Right. Um, and then we talked about the idea of like if you had your own startup and it became successful would you rather oh. continue that business mm. or the oh. startup or, or would you want a prototype like mm. you know and, and not necessarily you know, and we're and assuming that, like both would pay you yeah, a lot of money exactly. so the money is not the issue it's more of like what type of personality are mm. you are you a type that wants to continue to build it bigger and, and bigger on one thing mm. or to create new and see what or works. you take your money and run or yeah, yeah. or that too <laughs> yeah but again both but both situations situ we're assuming you're gonna have a lot of money so value, you're gonna yeah. um it's more of what would you rather spend your days doing no right. it doesn't uh, it then it's not necessarily both scenarios because you could uh, keep going in that business that we were talking about um, uh, Zuckerberg right they're getting an offer of one billion but obviously his company is worth much more yeah, yeah. but what if it went the other way not all companies succeed yeah yeah but it can go that same way with the prototyping thing you could you know take your money you could and sell it for like what you think is a lot of money and then oh it looks out now it's a 10 billion dollar you sold it for like 20 million right. and now it's right Right. So, but, both, so both what we but were let's just, just in this scenario, the, let's just assume the psyche of because we're not <clears throat> the money is one thing, but like it's more of but we were saying we were, I think I believe we were talking about it's on the basis of like prototyping and like how much what belief do you have that what this idea will continue to grow or has it run its course and you think that it's this is it right? I think the discussion was at the well at the time was more of like is your personality more of like you like to tinker and mm. test new things mm -hmm. or do you like to you know try to keep the one thing that you've been working on or, afloat or, or you want to move on to another idea right yeah, yeah. some people so like just like yeah was the, yeah my initial question was what is the process and you have an idea now how do you like blueprint it basically and, and start to give it legs to see if it will walk in, in in many fields not just like software stuff but um so yeah that's what we talked about no oh, and then games as well we talked about what would because you were trying to see like what oh yeah and then game i was trying Mono to see what game one Mono would be interested in playing what, actually, what did you decide is, on that one there is an interesting game i found out about recently red dead redemption which i think Mona might be interested because the setting is like cowboys and western um and so i i don't know we'll I, see i had said my interest would be if there was something that simulates the stock market and i may that may be but then i also talked about how when the games were coming out i would play them for a while but then my attention you span i would disconnected, lose, yeah, yeah. disconnected so mm -hmm. so there are people on both sides mm-hmm what do you mean on both sides? Meaning people who will who cannot just get into the video game. Oh, they're plenty of you, people, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Right, yes, right. Yes. And then <clears throat> there are like the two sitting next to us who 
who have not given up on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's so as he Salma and I were talking about this mm-hmm. uh concept this morning, the this whole idea of the way you do things, it takes about 10,000 uh hours or 10 years to mm-hmm. kind of perfect something. So I've heard. And uh, <laughs> I also Even feel there's been something contrary to that recently. But generally, yeah. but generally I do mm-hmm. feel there's some truth to it yeah. because as uh the when idea you be, hmm? The idea is if you spend enough time at something you be, you'll become very good at it or, mm. or you or it becomes the norm for you sure you might not perfect it it's just this is the way you do things so an example I was talking about and not necessarily the doing but what you focus on mm. okay so if it becomes because so for example um, your interests are very different to my interests and my interests are based on my upbringing for the most part and yes they've adjusted slightly but they haven't adjusted to that extent where um i have to i have to very be very conscious of being interested in other ideas until i get into the habit of being interested in those other ideas see what i mean so yeah. because i read a lot therefore reading to me is the big deal yeah okay you have to create a baseline yes and so uh, my my more simplistic example was because we used to have tea with teapots when we first came to the US mm. um yeah. there weren't that many teapots around because mm. people didn't drink as much tea there was many people used to drink coffee and for me it was a big deal that i would whenever we would go out somewhere to a mall or somewhere i'd think oh if i could find a teapot and it wasn't just any teapot there was a teapot for four cups versus a teapot for 10 cups versus one for six cups you know and so there were different kinds of preferences i had and it took some time to realize that i needed to stop looking for teapots mm-hmm. um and so we were talking about how how can we change our thoughts to avoid us constantly looking backward into the past mm-hmm. and open up our minds to engage in thoughts and ideas which are not the thoughts and ideas that we're familiar with but are new or different or similar to other people she was also arguing that it takes a lot of effort because it's so much easier for for example if one of and I talk about the things we're interested in mm-hmm. the house that we're building in uh, Pakistan or mm. or our past or our you know the people that we know versus a whole group of other people that are not part of our repertoire so if my question to the three of you is if you were trying to push yourself to get out of the 10,000 hour mode and move into another set of 10,000 hours what do you think that might be and if not what is it that you think regardless of whether you've spent the 10,000 hours you know hypothetically speaking that you think you would want to spend the rest of the 20,000 hours of your life because apparently we live for 30,000 hours was that where where did i see that number I don't know but I had mentioned that yes. if you look at your average lifespan in the number of weeks mm. it will be like some thousands of weeks which mm. seems very short yes yes if you say yeah my whole life I have about 1500 weeks left and then I'll be dead yeah yeah it's like that doesn't sound like a lot of time yeah so so what is it is there anything that you think you know whether it's video gaming or something else that you do on a regular basis and you think you know what I'm, I don't care if people will change I'm going to keep doing this or or thinking this keep buying teapots <laughs> mm, yeah Run, running is one for me that of recent um well with the change in diet and watching that film but now I've f- finally been able to run the route that I've been doing without like taking Stop a break mm. mm-hmm. so i want to make sure i can consistently do that now mm-hmm. uh and then kind of increase the mileage but i think that would be an interesting thing like because i see endurance running where they can run like over 250 miles or something like that um so, so would like i would want to okay. like learn about the efficiencies of running and mm-hmm. all yeah, the other than efficiencies i found that once i had started running and orig- originally was to lose weight Mm-hmm. that it becomes uh, like a high right right and then yeah. you continue you can't stop yeah 
that's what I liked from like, I, doing it continuously. I know the what the high you're talking about, but it was never strong enough to keep me running. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's also true. Like, I don't know. Well, maybe from like when you're just feeling tired, it's like, uh, well, because yeah, you're just like, I don't want to. I've been I've been running since I was what? Yeah, that high is it doesn't last as long. Twenty five. <laughs> no, but then you had knee problems, and that's why you can't. But that run. was much later. Mm. Oh, you stopped you start... running even before that? Before no, no. the knee problem? No, no. That's you, what I'm saying. This was 55, in your 30s, 56. right? No, I started oh. at 25. Oh, 25. Yeah. So. <coughs> yeah. What about you? What's the What's the thing that is the 10th? I'm pretty item? set on the programming now. It, but that's that's fairly new. Yeah, that's in your true. Life. That's like how many years new? Four years new? Yeah, I'm not as dedicated as I feel like I should be, but. Uh, but yeah, but I'm still convinced that um, that's something I'd want to. But that's good. Good. I think you can have a job which is related in software, which um, which where you don't have to be a programmer sitting doing programming all day long. Yeah. Right. But you're still involved with troubleshooting. But m mine is not so much of the work related thing. It's just what? How will you keep your mind occupied? Mm. What will occupy your mind? intentionally where mm -hmm. you think i'm not going to as dated as it might seem this i'm sticking um, with this for me it would be golf okay but you've got a thing problem so but your mind will still be occupied mm -hmm. even if you can't play no no I, well, this is not something like permanent it's just a tennis elbow which will go away isn't that kind of sad? You got a tennis elbow playing golf, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that too in my left on left arm. Oh, yeah. Right oh. Arm. <laughs> but, uh, it can happen. Yeah. Now, does golf consume your mind? How often yes. a week? Oh, if when I'm playing, I can do it at least twice or three times a week. Mm. Okay. What about you? You so you think coding will be oh, so if you choose to change, what do you think you will get old? What of your habits do you think? You know what? If for example, when I was younger um, in Pakistan, we were very excited about material and having it sewn into certain. I'm mm. I'm. It's become old for me now. I I don't. I like looking at nice material, mm. but. I don't feel I have to buy the material every time I see it. Um, yeah, what will get old? I, think I don't know. I I feel like nothing I, I'm doing right now will get old. I think absorbing content that uh, unnecessary, unnecessary. Content. Yeah. Yeah, I want to stop that. For me, like yeah. what? Like With that, uh, full you, of content. Like watching like YouTube you. videos, <laughs> oh. Insta Instagram or Reddit. I think those. But you can become choosy because it people. almost becomes like what TV was, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically. Mm. So yeah. With, with anything that you will <clears throat> let go of, and you have to let go of something. You can't. I'm just sure I already have because a lot of things now. When I go and I see glimpses of it. And I think, oh, I don't want to be doing this and wasting my time. But like what? Like we've talked about. Um, and remember, this is a podcast, so, so it doesn't matter uh, if we've talked about <laughs> it before. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, weddings and, you know, those kind of oh, going boring to events. Boring events. Yeah, yeah. Not I've already, I've, I've crossed that bridge. Yeah, that's right. a good one to cross. Yeah. Uh, no, no more large events. Just no any. Large events. Any yeah. events. All right. <laughs> No, no more ritualistic. Yeah, yeah. Ga gatherings. No ritual. No more peer pressure. Mm -hmm. no more yeah, I don't like. Well, if you're not even at the event, you don't have to worry yeah, about peer pressure. Uh, Correct. Um, so yes, those are. <coughs> which is, which I think is very mm. Pakistani. Uh, mm. Generally, it's mm. not a very mm. American. Because I think they do. They like have Halloween and Christmas. Mm, yeah. Oh, oh, you're yeah, you're talking similar. about even something like that. Even those, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no traditions. Well, unless I mean, you want to. Unless you want to, yeah. Oh, okay. This is the one. So yeah. which of the ones do you think you will want to hold on to, and which of the ones? <laughs> <laughs> None of them. <laughs> Maybe New Year's. No, Maybe. I'm done with that. Mm, That's yeah. like the only one. No. Yeah, that was kind of it's it's stupid. Ooh, the calendar switch. No, now no. there's another yeah. number. <laughs> that's that's going to be Ooh. the stupidest yeah. thing. In, yeah. Uh, human we have school. done the stupidest no, thing for many, 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 many years. Even birthdays yeah, are pretty stupid. No, I, I'm we done with that. We should be celebrating our moms for the birth. We if you're going to celebrate birthday, we didn't birthday, do any of the work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like that. 
Yeah, but right. it, I mean that part's not happening either. <laughs> <laughs> celebrating what? Oh, you missed that. They oh, celebrate, celebrate the mother because the mother gave oh, birth. Birth. Well, well, both. Mm. Wait, we didn't do anything. Yeah, you, didn't <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask to be born. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, what if you have an unhappy life and you start pelting your parent? You're the ones who did this. Well, that's a stupid, useless yeah. uh, thing to do. New Year's I just like because the fireworks still are cool to me, like the pyrotechnic mm. aspect of it. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Like the actual event is meaningless. So I mm. had su suggested that I wanted to read mm. um, okay. this book, um, just a section from it. The book's name is Dancing Bears, True Stories of People Nostalgic for Life Under Tyranny. Mm. And it kind of relates to what we were talking about in some way where people's minds were so used to and, and this um, author, his name is Witold Zablowski um, and he writes about how the dancing bears in um, Bulgaria, I think it is, um, uh, they were taken and, and placed into a, a park and they had lived for 20 plus years where their teeth had been pulled out and they had been taught how to dance in a very you know through mm. torture and that this is how they were taught how to dance they would be put the bears would be placed on a, a warm surface and a, a hot surface mm, and true. then they'd play music and then the, the and the poor bears would lift up their feet mm. and they would connect music with pain in their feet so then anytime mm. they would hear the music Pavlo. they would think mm. they would be that's so interesting that uh, even Bulgaria had. Um, oh, it was. It went all the way to Europe. Um, mm -hmm. This concept, and it started from India, and it actually because um, what he calls gypsies, but are now called Roma, mm -hmm. uh, people who came from India. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who bought it. It initiated in in India, and then was brought here. So, um, his argument is that that human beings, like the people who are living under communist rule have gone through the same kind of, um, they, they've been taken out of something uh, that was traumatic, but they want to keep coming back to it. And so I'll just read this first paragraph, which says, for hundreds of years, Bulgarian gypsies trained bears to dance, welcoming them into their families and taking them on the road to perform. In the early 2000s, with the fall of communism, they were forced to release the bears into a wildlife refuge. But even today, whenever the bears see a human, they still get up on their hind legs to dance. And so in the tradition of, I'm going to not be able to pronounce these names, but I will try, Ryzad Kapunski, uh, award-winning Polish journalist Witold Zablowski uncovers remarkable stories of people throughout Eastern Europe and in Cuba who, like Bulgaria's dancing bears, are now free, but who seem nostalgic for the time when they were not. His on-the-ground reporting of hitchhiking through Kosovo as it declares independence, arguing with Stalin, adoring tour guides at the Stalin Museum, and giving taxi rides to Cubans fearing for the life of Fidel Castro, provides a fascinating portrait of social and economic upheaval and a lesson in the challenges of freedom and the seduction of a the seductions of a th authoritarian rule. So that kind of last piece is really interesting. That. Sometimes people feel authoritarianism is something to look up to. You know, they peop mm -hmm. sometimes they, they want teachers to be strict and rigid mm. yeah. and they want they want to be told what to do. And if you very related to current day politics, which I will not uh, make an example of. But yes, yes. There's I, and that, he actually uh, there's starts that idea with that. Yes. is very present. Yes, it's very much around us. But I, uh, I, what I find interesting is, what is it that makes our minds? It's easy for one. Well, but kind of it's what we're easy saying. if somebody tells you what, what to, to do, do, where to go. Ooh, then, then you don't have to do it. You don't have to think about it. Yes. Um, and decisions can be hard sometimes. Yes. It helps give. It feels like you know, that there's somebody's providing you with a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it's just a lazy way out. So, so it's also easier to make decisions that way. If in a group true. everyone has an opinion and everyone's opinion is different, it can so cause, that, like they say, democracy is inefficient way of doing. But also, that. you mentioned children, <coughs> so that is there is a, a a time where they th people, uh, more people will would think that kids need to be disciplined, 
and you need don't need to have a democratic system in uh, in an early education whereas ob obviously you're talking about more adult life uh, well no so here's what's interesting the research in education says that um after kindergarten humans do not learn to the capacity that their minds can learn because it's we made it such a rigid authoritarian society in the school environment mm. that all that inquisitiveness that you might have had as a, at in kindergarten where it's always why is this like that or what mm. are you doing or you know all of those sometimes you know irritating questions to the adult around you is now you you stop that questioning and you say don't question mm. just listen True. and learn and unless you're in a very which uh, can be not conducive to learning a lot of yes. times which is related to what me and Ajit were talking about when we were talking about how we would like to work uh and the traditional 9 to 5 thing the problem with that is you know if you've ever worked on your own sometimes y it takes a little bit to like build up the vibe of getting into a workflow mm -hmm. it's like sometimes I don't want to start work at nine. I'd, I'll start it in two hours after I get my mind right. Yes, yes. Um, so oh, that I has want to do to work through light. Right. So the pros with the the rigid system is mm -hmm. that you're getting everybody together, and then if there's any sort of collaborative stuff, then you can get that done. But I think the downside is that humans are not like robots not so pro it's productive at the same time yeah exactly um, it takes different day. things for different people um so but but then the problem is well um, okay if we're teaching kids and they all learn differently how do we how do we foster an environment where they can all learn at the same time Yes, but is there uh, is there a need for everyone to be learning the same thing because when you get out to the workforce if right. if we're preparing for the workforce which is also something that so you could the, argue mm -hmm. uh everyone is doing something different. That's true. So what's the solution though then? Germany, so everyone learns have, yeah. everyone they learns have decision like when they're 12 or 13. Are yeah. you, do you want to go to trade or do you want to go office create, and, create know, a yeah. sandbox let people create their own castle or whatever they want right right Let's so so that. the argument <clears throat> is we, is it a human need to learn and know or is this, is it is the individual in conflict with society the societal need of what the society needs you to do versus what you want to do um i i keep thinking that the our public education system is a very recent development in human history mm -hmm. um do we and granted we've made a lot of leaps and bounds as far as innovations are concerned and and you know because of the education system that currently exists but i imagine that the thousands of years before the last 200 years have also been quite incremental in development haven't they so it's not like human beings were not doing anything and all of a sudden the public school system started which was very you know which is the system that we're all familiar with and now all of a sudden humanity knows exactly what they need to do mhm mm well it's also a matter of um making everybody productive right i mean in the past it might have been a few may have done what was needed now how do you bring everybody else in the fold a as to each person's own capability and uh, be able to contribute but to how would can you so how would you shake the system it's it's the same thing that we were talking about you know you're going to play video games forever and ever or are you going to buy teapots forever and ever are you going to uh, do you feel that this newer way of thinking over the next last 200 years is the optimal way of thinking about learning and participating in society i mean you're already questioning the 9 to 5 which is 100 year new concept mm -hmm. not even a 100 year new concept barely yeah. or maybe it is um i think maybe the opportunity i don't know you're not going to change the existing system but the opportunity that's out there for humans to push in a different direction why do you say that 
change. Why do I say that? Why do you say it it's not going to change? It could evolve. Uh, because I, mean, I have the sense that it's a very rigid system. I've tried changing systems in the private sector and it's not easy because people don't... It might don't. not be easy, but... but well, maybe. that's what I mean. If you push, there's only so much I can push and I'm like, all right, well, I'm not going to waste my time with this. This is ineffective use of my time. But you need enough people to think the same way as you to be able to push together. Right. But so there's a, you're going through a path of resistance. So yes. maybe this comes from my laziness. But when I see resistance, I'm like, okay, fine. Let's find another way. So what I'm saying is I think an opportunity for humans to change that is if you look at the examples of these college dropouts of the tech leaders how they were able to use technology and the internet to basically learn and create value. I think maybe younger people, if they get access to the internet and a computer, there's room there to to learn what they want to learn, as we're saying, and learn on their, well, I don't know about learn on their own time because they, they will probably be going to traditional schools, but... Um, but they'll but they'll have a chance to then uh, learn and build what they want to build, um, especially with these cloud microservices. They don't have to even build big things like Facebook or whatever. They could build small services that serve some purpose. Uh, but I have uh, <clears throat> in my um, work experience, I've seen change already from the time that I started working. Mm -hmm. um, working from home was unthinkable mm -hmm. parties that you know we yes we used to have parties after after work but not the amount and the free food and all that was unheard of right. so there are there are things that have changed over the last 20 30 years. yeah i also think that in education it, maybe it wouldn't be the actual system of the school that changes but i think there might be a bigger push for people to learn on their own and take online courses that might interest them more in a trade or, uh, you know, in something software related or, uh, yeah, I don't know, it could be blacksmithing, anything so, that they could learn online. So I think it maybe it won't be a systematic change mm -hmm. where all the schools now have to incorporate, you know, a secondary learning, but it could be just, you know, students learning on their own or uh, maybe during that free period that we had at high school, they turn that into some sort of online learning experience. I don't know. So if you think <clears throat> of city schools in, in urban areas and the creation of the public school system um, was, it, it took place primarily when the, the laws against child labor came up. Mm -hmm. So n now you've got all these children um, and how do you keep them engaged? Of course, because in, you're in the city, the fathers, generally, if you're thinking of the traditional um, system, the fathers are leaving work. And now you have the mothers, okay, or the women that need to be employed. And therefore, many of them were employed to, to run these schools. If your parents or the whatever the adult people, uh, are now the adults have the flexibility of work and it's not a nine to five it's not the usual you know that could potentially change the lives of children because generally the homeschool children are much homeschool students are much more productive and engaged the only challenge that has come up you know often is that they're socially not as competent but generally, their intellect and their knowledge base is much higher than the student who will go through a regular school. Mm -hmm. And so if the work environment changes, that could potentially impact what happens with young people in the homes of those people whose work environment has changed. Yeah, that's true. Um, when do you, uh, what's the time frame on this change? 100 years, 1,000 years? I think a hundred years. I think a hundred years um, because um, not a thousand years. I, I think within a hundred years, um, when we move away from manufacturing, you know, because manufacturing was a new development as well. So when manufacturing becomes so refined and robotic, when I say refined, I mean, you know, robotic, 
um, that the job that you can then have parents in close con contact with children or you can live remotely you don't have to be in the center city center to be able to do your job as the jobs move away from you know what would be interesting to see if society became urban over the last two or three hundred years how it might become more suburban uh, yes or it might be in another sphere that as in you know I, I, I maybe it's not called suburban maybe it's called something else because maybe uh, buildings will you'll have these mega structures where mm -hmm. it's like a city in the building it could be i don't know i've seen artwork i like the, there's artwork that i have on my desktop where it's mm -hmm. like a futuristic mm -hmm. uh, scene of these the, you have your regular skyscrapers but then you have these like mega. times mega, x mega yes. structures which yes. could be their own city uh, but anyway yeah, yeah, keep keep going with that thought because that that's what I like about the thought of pushing. But, uh, the honestly, that sounds like if they if you don't have concrete walls, I don't want to be involved in that. That sounds like too many humans and too close of a proximity. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if they had concrete walls and it was soundproof, then I wouldn't mind. That that would be cool. Then you just walk downstairs, walk out of your room, and now you're in the cafe. But, but, <laughs> but what the if there's mall? this kind of something that? avoid sound to come you you put this something yeah, on maybe. some and, technology yeah some technology and some Material. rays yeah. which and, and you have already cities growing uh, food on the, oh, on the cups, roof right yeah so make yourself self-sufficient i mean could, 100 years ago did people think we would be living the way we're living now hundred years ago yeah no, probably well, not. depends With computer depends where <laughs> I'm sure everyone had different pers Yes, yes, depends where. Yeah. But um anyone living in the city um high rises maybe. But I will say, I mean, if you ask people from I don't know, the 1400s to the 1500s, I imagine maybe there wasn't as much change. So if you asked did the 1400 people think the 1500 people were living that way? <laughs> It'd probably be yeah, it was the same. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So we could theoretically in a hundred years still just have smartphones and whatnot i don't think so but hmm. i think that's a possibility too we just stagnate for a little bit <laughs> i mean most of humanity is stagnation anyway right is it yeah. if you look at the how long not as what, of recent no i said most of humanity oh oh yeah okay oh yes yeah, the majority Mar yeah yeah in majority most of, of it, equals majority yeah, <laughs> yeah. in what sense <laughs> If you took a timeline of human history, how old are humans? What was the first human? Are we talking about 500,000 years? Not even, like 200,000. Oh, we should something. watch that show that we were watching. Okay, so I'm saying Sapien. of 200,000 years, mm -hmm. you have like just a few peaks of innovation. Uh, right. So like Which we discovered probably, fire. Maybe that was yeah, the first the one. 5,000 years. Writing agriculture. writing, agriculture, that came in a little bit. And then... Then like the industrial, and then just in the last hundred years, the industrial revolution and, and they then finally technology. Made a wheel. And then yeah, whenever <laughs> that was. <laughs> that was a big. We made yeah, wheels. Took a long, yeah. <laughs> that was Round. a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I don't remember why I said that, but uh, yeah. Oh well, maybe the next hundred years could be a stagnant bit. We won't. We won't know. So um, earlier when we were kind of thinking about witty banter um and i think we don't have time to discuss it now because it's nearly time to end we have seven minutes we have mm. seven minutes but i i think we'll just kind of put this mm. idea out there Probably and then come back time. yes come mm. back to it uh or a doll oh ah, yes mm, what a type of doll what about it you will tell us what you were saying and then we'll revisit it when we come back i want to also know the name for uh, it in pakistani term uh, it is apparently called Urad Dal in Pakistan, but we can do our homework but it's on it. similar to... We can make a list of all the dals <laughs> and we can bring them here. We were come, actually... How come I haven't heard of because it? Because it's co cooked in Bahawalpur. You, there are a lot of dalain that mm. you are not familiar <laughs> with, <laughs> as, as um, I am not mm. familiar with either. Mm. Um, but what, what we were considering is doing a little demo um, in the kitchen on oh, whether it was the cooking, the coffee, or making of well, the Well, yeah, dal. I was on this hype of 
uh, mm. being a bean master in that, <laughs> but but using Daniel's channel, utilizing Daniel's existing bean channel mm. to mm. push uh, sell beans. to to mark yeah to sell lentils to the U.S. market where. If you wanted to get these lentils, you have to go to very the, specific the, type of lentils. Right? Yes. Yeah, you like have to go you to particularly order not dal, just some yes. average Joe. Yeah, you have to go to the <laughs> Daisy store, which you know not everybody I shops love doing, at. Yes. Um, so I thought maybe there'd be a market specifically with minimalists and vegans. I think you could. There's an opportunity to sell beans too, <laughs> and so to help market that, you could make these small videos on. On witty banter, yeah, or or on Port My Santos YouTube, YouTube channel of like um, some sort of recipes where you could uh, for min vegan minimalists yes. where yeah. five minute the meals. beans the first of all the beans itself will have long shelf life so you don't mm. have to worry about them going bad mm. uh, and then yes also just these recipes where you can make something that'll last you a week. So you don't have to worry about cooking it. It's mm. relatively healthy and, and it's you like the taste. And yeah, you don't spend, maybe you spend one day cooking it for the week and you don't have to hopefully spend too much time. I can imagine the longest time is probably the just it soaking in water. Um, but anyway, so that I was talking about that idea on like trying to sell this product and market it. Um, Speaking of selling, I think Tanya has some selling to do. His neighbors don't even know that he has a coffee business. Oh. <laughs> and they were, if you were to uh, give your uh, samples of your coffee to them, to your neighbors, maybe you'll get some business. Some repeat business there. <laughs> <laughs> do they have a grinder? I'm sure they do. I didn't ask. Yeah. Um, so we should revisit that. Uh, I think we should do a bit of homework for next time because, you know, me, I still eat. Yeah, you know, I got a question. How do we like, you know, we I have these creative ideas and well, and you guys yes, too. Yes. How do we? Uh, I I they come to me, mm. but then nothing happens to them. <laughs> <laughs> Why not you don't do them? But we have yeah. been we have been following through on them. And then so this is related to also to the prototyping thing. How do we mm. get that? You have an idea. How come it's not? Uh, so have we had and, and our we, one year? My now? ideas aren't even cost money. I have cameras. Yes, to yes. Record okay, something. so here's here's what I would suggest. And 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 it has to come from within too. But go ahead. Yes. So <laughs> here's, what, here's what I would suggest. We've kind of totally defunct this idea of ritual and habit and you know questioning. Yeah. So so say the last year we dedicated to witty banter, which we have done in just kind of. Sharing ideas and it's been a year. Through. It, I mm, think it's nearly been a year. Almost uh, oh, okay. fifty-two will be so a you year. Want okay. to transform that. So, so I'm wondering, we could intentionally not do it on the year, mm. <laughs> or, or we could or transform it into or transform it into mm. uh, this ideas. idea, the podcast, the, this idea now of moving witty banter into the kitchen. Yeah, that's true. And Why does it have to be the kitchen? Be, because that's the idea we're working on. Oh, I the, see. Beans. the beans. The oh. beans. <laughs> <laughs> the bean idea. I, I think that would be um, extremely unique, fun way of doing things. And it would be a way of growing our thoughts to actions. Yeah, I have but, to stop. Uh, but I'm uh, thinking why it does it have, this is an idea for now. It could change to something else. But right? then when it changes, we change it to right. the so it's not witty just banter the in the sitting room. Right, right. Or witty or banter in the in garage. The garage or, <laughs> yeah. Right. What were you saying? I have to stop watching YouTube videos endlessly. And do something yourself. And make your own. Yeah, make your own. Agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, watching other people, okay, is fine. To get yeah. inspiration. But it gets to a point. But it's, ha but it's hard to internally. To do it yourself? It's that habit thing. Do you need a mm -hmm. team? No, no, no. That's mm -hmm. not going to work. If yeah. someone tells me to do something, then then mm -hmm. you then I'm going harder into the <laughs> <laughs> the lane that I'm in. <laughs> well, you can tell other people to do what to do. No, I, so it's not telling people wise. what to do. No, I mean it's of, joint idea. So so think about it for for next time. Um, think of how you would like to move on to this next can, idea. Can I hear the bean thing again? Because I wasn't privy to the okay. Show so idea. basically. Um, 
some of these beans you have to go to a daisy store mm -hmm. to okay. get them right. uh not and then these reg american shopper u.s shoppers <coughs> don't n go to these stores right they're not regulars right so uh you, you're, the shop? you're basically targeting those the people who are vegan minimalists okay which minimalism i don't know if it's hot but veganism is hot right and you Do we and you you're hot? trying to you're trying to get them buy to buy the beans okay and the way to convince them is to create some of these marketing videos oh, on here's some interesting ways to basically live oh, eat uh and if you're interested in a in a low effort way to eat tasty vegan food here's the source here's the beans to do so mm. Um, so that's kind of the general you're idea. You're saying that Safeway and all these stores ne don't necessarily carry them. Minor yeah, generic. they carry some. Yeah, but they don't carry all of them. But then also the value add is we're showing you how to transform this material, these different type of beans into, mm. sorry, I knocked on the table, to uh, uh, transform them into the product, the end result. And Daniel, are you open to expanding your Yeah, are you open? then Daniel already has an existing bean, bean channel. channel. I mean, I can always have my own bean channel, but mm. if he wants to focus only on coffee, then I understand that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I had to see if there's a way to separate the right. pages, just yeah. so there's no confusion. Mm. Yeah, yeah, otherwise and, and literally, it will it could even be like, we have our, we post these videos on this YouTube channel, right. and then we're just like, hey, you want to buy the beans for this thing? Go to Port Santos and yeah, buy yeah. it. Or find another company or yeah, or i just opened or, my own shopify could, or whatever yeah. or you could expand your yeah i think that it might be a way to create a, just a separate page mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. that like have the landing page go to that bean yeah, um, yeah. you know and then it not be well i mean it could be connected but mm -hmm. yeah so i think it could be a way have a little icon which takes you there right right mm -hmm. Or just in the list of items that you have available, then there's just additional items, right? <laughs> <laughs> More beans. Yeah, that's true. But what if someone buys that? Hey, what the hell? This is not coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's they, something the, better. The did, they, did, they, <laughs> did they read the description yeah, of the yeah, thing they, they clicked just on? saw the coffee bean on that's the like going on. That's like going on Amazon and then being like, <laughs> yeah. hey, these are napkins. I ordered a cell yeah. phone. <laughs> yeah. well, like, well, you clicked like, on the napkin. Yeah, yeah I guess. Time. Yeah, or it's wait, is daylight savings kicked in? Yes, yep. it did. Okay, because I was like, some. Why? What not, time is it? It says six oh one right, on computer, my computer. Computer needs to be. But fixed. it's five. Yeah, five oh one. Wait. We okay. went backward fall an back, hour. Fall backwards. So shouldn't it be four now? Yeah. No, There's, not four. It says six. So Actually, it I've seen some. No, it says five on my phone. But no, phone is fixed. Phone is automatic. Yeah, but but the normal time is four to five. So it's correct. oh, it was already changed. It's already changed. Uh, like this in yeah, midnight. Yeah, in the phone, morning. Phones yeah. change them. Right. No, I thought it changed like while we were doing the podcast. No. Um, okay. So yeah, all right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and hopefully uh, our listeners can continue to be creative and you know drop all the habits that stop you from uh, pursuing your, your ideas and accomplishing your <laughs> dreams. <laughs> um, you know, we'll tune in next time and see if we have accomplished any of our dreams. Uh, but thanks for tuning in, and, and uh, toodaloo. Toodaloo. Bye.